Welcome to Coach Connects. Coach Connects is an umbrella program for Irish cricket coaches, providing opportunities for qualified coaches and non-coaches alike to share knowledge, network, participate in training and to learn from some of the best coaches in cricket. This is our Coach Discussions piece, where we give coaches the platform to share their story. You'll hear from coaches giving insights on coaching from different sporting coaches that will help you in your coaching journey. So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Coach Discussions. This week, I'm joined by Gareth Thompson from CSNI. Gareth, good afternoon. Hi, Stephen. Nice to chat today. So, Gareth, we'll start at your most recent public appearance. Um, special recognition for club coaching in the women's game across the island. So massive congratulations. Yeah, no, thanks very much. It was a bit of a surprise to, to get that recognition at a you know at a nice awards evening and um yeah as I said a bit of a surprise but nice to get recognized for some of the work that I've put in that's fantastic and you know it's it's always nice when a coach is recognized especially at firstly across the island secondly across NCU and obviously your club as well so you must be doing something right care to share any secrets (laughs) um yeah I think I just I I care quite a lot about about the players potentially too much sometimes um but I you know, I care about the players and I'm I'm interested in their development and, you know, the team's performance. Um, so, yeah, and I, I think I just try and put a lot of effort in. So, you know, I might be the most knowledgeable, um, you know, I haven't played it at the highest level like some have, but I just try and put in as much effort as possible and um, try and learn as much um, and, you know, then try and pass that knowledge on to my players um, and just try and improve as much as I can and not, you know, not be afraid to make make mistakes or anything and just try and keep learning. Brilliant to hear, Gareth. So for those of our uh, community who, who watch coach discussions or listen to it, who is Gareth Thompson? Where are you from, Gareth? Yeah, I'm a 26-year-old from Belfast. Um, I've pretty much been here all my life. Uh, in my day job, I work for BT as a project manager and then as you said, with my cricket, I'm a coach and a player um, with civil service. And I also do a bit of coaching throughout the women and girls pathway within the NCU. Fantastic. And in terms of coaching, Gareth, how long are you coaching then? Um, well, I've sort of been coaching like the women's stuff since probably the end of 20, the 2020 season, start of 2021. Um, and then before that, I did, you know, I wouldn't even call it coaching before that, like facilitating under 11s training at the, at the club, just whenever, whenever an extra pair of hands were needed. So not, not all that long and um, sort of two full seasons and then a, a bit before that. Brilliant. And like any good coach, how did you get started? Was it, you know, we're looking for volunteers or Gareth, you're the new women's coach. How did they, how did they get going? Yeah, no, it's a good question. And I probably just fell into it by chance. You know, I, I started off just going along on a Monday evening, it was to the under 11 practice, whereby, you know, they just needed people to go along and help with the numbers um, and help the the head coach sort of deliver the drills. Um, but I think at, at this time I was, I was used to sprint throughout my school and university days and that took up a lot of my time. So I, I didn't play that much cricket, but I didn't mind, you know, doing a little bit of coaching and then, as, as I moved on, I think, you know, that Monday night didn't suit me anymore because of my my training. So then women's training was on a Wednesday and I was still keen to get involved. And it was a friend of mine that was that was the coach at the time. So I, I just was helping him out then. Um, and then sort of I was thrust some responsibility whenever he uh, he moved across to England to to go to university. And it was sort of like, right, we need a head coach. And I sort of said, OK, well, I'll I'll, I'll give it a shot. And and then I've, I've I've done that ever since, and I've sort of picked up a bit of coaching. Then, as I said, with with the NCU along the way. Brilliant, that's great to hear. Um, if we think of coaching and we think of definitions, anybody I've spoken to has their own definition of what coaching is. So, in your own words, what is coaching, Gert? Um, I think it's providing an environment and um, where players can have fun, and um, learn and want to come back. You know, and I, I think whether whether the players are eight years old or whether the players are, you know, 30, 40 years old, I think it's really key that they have fun, you know, and they're able to learn and that they want to come back every week because, you know, it, ultimately for quite a lot of people, 
they're not going to make a you know a living out of out of sport they're just going to do it for fun so you know as long as you're providing an environment that's that's fun engaging you know keeps people entertained but also at the same time they're they're learning and they're progressing in in whatever way they see you know that they want to um then i i think that's what sort of what coaching is that's fantastic and in terms of like you've mentioned fun you've mentioned engaging have you put some deeper thought into your coaching and um, for example a philosophy do you have a coaching philosophy or have you thought about it that much I think like in terms of a philosophy um I just try with 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 any player I, I think the, one of the most important things is that they're able to do the basics well um but at the same time it doesn't just mean they're going they're going to hit tennis balls off a cone for for an hour you know so something between doing the basics well but, but doing that in a you know in a fun manner in a in a manner where it's 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 not boring you know so it's kind of trying to make the basics not boring in in, in a way um and because if you look at the the best players in the world you know what they do more than anyone else is they do the very simple things really really well you know they have a lot of talent but you know they're doing the simple things really well and i think if people can can realize that you know both the the actual playing ability and the mental ability if, if you can get that sort of basis you know of knowledge um you know you, you can go far with you know just through trying to learn and, and get really near loose basics that's fantastic to hear Gert. um and you, you've touched on there how you got into coaching so you've mentioned athletics so obviously so you're a sprinter and you're you're the athlete did you get involved in coaching in athletics or was it cricket coaching that you kind of fell into at the time yeah no and actually not not at all with with athletics I didn't do any coaching but I think I was very lucky to have some really brilliant coaches throughout throughout my athletics you know I, I, I ran at a decent level and like the coaches that I had would have committed a serious amount of time to me and my, and my training group you know I would have you know they would have been there four or five six days a week with me and you know I, they would have literally planned out pretty much your life for 40 weeks of the year you know and it, it I think from that I realized that these people would put an awful lot of effort in and you know to to a person and it meant a lot to me so I I feel like through my cricket I try and do the same thing you know if I can put a lot of effort into individuals you know it it can really make them feel good whenever you know they, they win a competition they score runs they take wickets or whatever um so I just try from my experiences I try and remember that and, and pass that on to the players that I'm coaching Brilliant. And as a matter of interest, what really stood out for you in terms of your athletic, athletic coaches that you now use in your coaching? I think they're really good attributes, sorry. Yeah, I, I think um, just sort of being approachable and not just being, you know, like a dictator, not just being like, right, this is what we're doing, you're doing it and that's it. You know, I think I was lucky to have really good relationships with, with the coaches that I had. And, you know, if I had any issues, I could approach them and I could just say look this isn't working for me um can we try and figure something out so I, I just that's what I try and do I try and be very approachable and you know I, I'd like to I like to think I am and if you know players have any reservations or any questions they can they can come to me and we can work to to try and help that that's fantastic so um if we think of Garrett coaching CS and I women's team over the coming weeks how do you create that learning environment for your players? I think it's sort of for so if we think about the upcoming weeks, you know, we've already sat down as a team and sort of put together a plan in place in terms of what we want to do this year, you know, how we want to do it, both in terms of like goals for the team and goals for individuals. Um, and then, you know, for me, I think it's important that then I put you know a structure in place in place so that it's not just random training sessions each week where we do one thing one week and then the next week we do something completely different um and you know then the key is just to progress on from the last week um and on so i think the key is for me anyway is just having that structure um so that the players know that right we're you know it's sort of pre-season at the minute if you want to call it but we're you know we're moving up the gears as we get closer to the getting on the grass again um, but just trying to provide a you know a, a really good structure um, in place so that players can sort of know that or sort of put a trust in a bit of you know in, in the coaching to be like, okay we are going to develop here both as individuals and as a team brilliant and then obviously 
Um, with any coach, you usually have a backroom team. Do you have a lot of support within the club to help you with your team? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's, you know, I think we've got quite a strong women's setup at civil service. You know, it's we've got quite a few people who help out. You know, whether that be the cap, you know, the captain of the team, the vice captain of the team, um, Ross, who helps me out with the coaching, and um, you know, the chairman, the director of cricket. I think you know, everyone sort of the women's team has sort of set the standard in terms of like performances. You know, and I, I think the club realised that the women's team have been very successful. Um, so yeah, we we get a good bit of support from the club, which is great. Um, because it you know it makes makes things a lot easier that you're not having to try and push you know push for pitches or push for training times. You know, I think the women's team are given a lot of respect. That's great to hear. Fantastic that the women the women are leading in the club. Um, in terms of your environment, so if you were to go coaching tonight, what would that look like or sound like for someone? Like myself, if I came to watch Gary Thompson coaching, I'd like to hope that it would be, um, you know, sort of like I've described. I like everyone being involved continuously. You know, nobody just standing about with their hands in their pockets. Um, I sort of, I always like to lead with sort of a fun warm up. I, I quite like, you know, warm up games that might not be essentially associated with cricket. You know, the silly things like frisbee you know, just to get the heart rate going or, you know, little like hops and jumps just to try and improve, you know, uh, like improve strength and speed and things like that. So it's it's a bit of a hybrid approach between sort of just like general conditioning exercises and then the actual cricket itself. And I, I try and do a, a bit of both just so that it's not, they turn up and they're just thinking, oh, I have to bat and bowl for, for 90 minutes here, you know, so try and try and make it a bit fun, but at the same time, train with a purpose as well you know so if I think one big thing is you know, I'm not really a big fan of like the whole team getting into the nets but sometimes that's what we have to do and I, I think it's key that each player has a plan whenever they go into the net so it's like if you're a bowler what are you working on or if you're a batter what are you working on as opposed to just running in and bowling or just trying to hit the ball as hard as you can so I, I try and always make you know drills or, or nets I try and put a purpose on it so the players know why why they're doing it as opposed to just going through the motions that's brilliant and like you've touched on it there and the way you said uh, giving your sessions or your drills a purpose so is that one of the ways or the way you keep your players focused in training I would say that would be probably the main way that you know training with a purpose and training with with goals in mind you know whether that might be you know, our first game of the season is in, you know, at the end of April, think about that during this session, you know, you're not just turning up to, to play this and, you know, do it for no reason. You know, I, I almost think that it's almost easier to train or get motivated to train if you do have that sort of, sort of goal um, and, you know, through putting purpose into, you know, net sessions, like, okay, think about where the fielders might be and try and hit it, you know, try and not hit it straight to them or as a bowler, right, let's try and bowl six you know consistent balls in a row and um, things like that I think it's it's a lot I think it's a lot easier as a player as well to sort of know what you're doing as opposed to just be unsure or am I just here to hit balls or you know just fill in numbers brilliant and then in terms of so that's where you're currently at in terms of your coaching um, and you're with this group approximately two years so how has that evolved how has your coaching evolved over the last two years and where do you see it evolving over the next two? Yeah, I think I think over the last two, it's evolved a lot. Like I think whenever I look back at what I was doing two years ago, I dread to think some of the sessions that I was running. Um, but I, I think just you know over time, I think I've learned that making mistakes is quite a valuable way to learn. You know, um, and I'm sure I've made a lot of mistakes over the last couple of years. But um, yeah, I'd say it's involved from that and also from working with other coaches so if I touch on what I said about the NCU you know I'm working with some coaches that are a lot more experienced than I am and just watching even the way that they deliver things never mind the drills themselves it's great to pick up on you know little little tips here and there and um, so like the more I can work with other coaches I'll you know I, I'll do any opportunity like that to, to try and to try and improve and then I think you know over the next two years that's I just like to work with as many different, more experienced coaches as possible to try and, you know, further my knowledge and maybe 
you know, it, they might think a different way than me, and I might think, well, that's a good, it's a good way to deliver this, or that's a nice drill to to work on this drill or skills. Yes. Really good to hear, and it is great that you have those coaches to shadow, you know, listen to, and and learn from. So, um, if we want to focus on a few of those two things there, um, in terms of performance analysis, have you used it? Is it something you want to use in the future? Yeah, I think. I think in terms of performance analysis, probably not a lot. It's probably a bit of a knowledge gap for me. I think the very simplest, you know, performance analysis would just be videoing players and sort of playing it back in slow mo, saying, "Oh, look, this is this is what you're doing here." You might not think it, and I, I think quite a lot of the time that's it's quite a good way to see yourself. You know, if you can't see yourself, it's hard to visualize it if someone's just explaining um, things. But yeah, definitely in terms of performance analysis is something that I'd like to grow my knowledge about, you know, because I think it's ever evolving within sport, you know, and, and cricket. If if you can try and identify areas where you can improve through performance analysis, I think it's brilliant. So yeah, that's definitely something that I'll look to learn more about over the next months and years. Brilliant. And you've talked about how you learn from other coaches and I suppose the best way of learning is reflecting back on something. So in terms of that, how do you reflect? Yeah, I think I'm probably to my detriment, I'm a bit of an overthinker about things and, you know, especially post post different events. So I, I would probably be my own harshest critic in terms of how things go. Um, but I just I, I like to, to think about how things have gone um, you know, maybe what was received well and what wasn't received well and then learn on it for next time. You know, I, I think it's just I think I, I always just try and do things better than I've done before, just through thinking about, right, how, you know, how, how was that received? Were people asking questions? Did I did I maybe leave out some key detail? Um, so, yeah, I, I always like to think about how things have gone and um, maybe too much sometimes, but just to try and improve next time as opposed to just burying my head in the sand and thinking that all's, all's wonderful whenever it might not be. Brilliant. And then in terms of your reflecting, do you discuss sessions or post sessions with your players? Do you have a peer coach who you talk to or do you have a mentor within the NCU you discuss coaching and drills with? I try, do you know what, probably something that I could be a lot better, you know, in terms of having having a, a mentor there to discuss with but I think I always try and ask players just for honesty you know just please tell me is that did you enjoy that did, if you didn't enjoy it please just let me know I'm not going to take it personally I, I'd, I'd rather know so that I'm not putting people through stuff that they don't want to do and um, but yeah that that would sort of be the main way that I would sort of get feedback if if you want to call it that but definitely something that that I definitely could work on would be working closer with you know a specific person in terms of like in a mentor capacity Fantastic. And then in terms of learning, obviously, I know personally you've gone and recently done the core coach course. Would you mind sharing with our, with our listeners what was that experience like for you and what kind of learning did you take from it? Yeah, I, I think the the core coach course, it was it was a really good course, actually. It was the, the content probably wasn't wasn't all that new, but I think it was the way in which you deliver things as a coach was what I learned an awful lot. Um, you know, Andy McRae was was a brilliant educator on the course, and it was simple things like I realised that I speak quite a lot whenever I'm delivering drills, and potentially that might not be the best way for players to learn. You know, um, sort of extracting information from the players was something that I learned was very important, and it makes sense whenever you think about it. You know, if if the players are having to think themselves as opposed to just being told all the information, um then then they might they might be able to learn but i yeah i, th I thought it was a it was a really good course because I, I learned an awful lot about it was really delivery of of coaching you know um and yeah i, I think i've been able to implement it what i've learned so far in the sessions that i've run and, and hopefully continue to going forward great to hear and then in terms of you've mentioned learning from other coaches obviously the recent core coach course over the next say six to nine months, what's next on your agenda? Where you can learn from, or have have you something you're aspiring to get to? Um, I, I think over the next six to nine months, I just again any coach that I work with, I just want to ask as many questions as possible. Um, you know, because as I said, like I haven't played at the highest level, whereas quite a lot of coaches have played at a higher level and have been in those sort of high performance environments. 
where they've no doubt picked up things from other coaches like I like I did in athletics. So I think it's just trying to be that sponge, you know, of, of information whenever I'm and chatting to people or, or or being with people. Um yeah, and in terms of the six to nine months, I'd as I'd like to try and get involved in as many different things as possible, you know, as many um you know as, as high level as I can get just to try and be a sponge of that information to try and then improve improve my own coaching. Brilliant. And then in terms of resources, um, obviously you've come through the core coach recently and there's some great resources of where to learn from. Would you mind sharing where you avail of those learning opportunities, whether it's social media, etc.? Yeah, I think the main one that I would use is the I Coach Cricket um website. It's from the the ECB and we got access to it through the core coach. And you know, on Twitter, they're constantly pushing out um clips of different thoughts of coaches or drills or you know ways to deliver the the drills and i think it's it's a brilliant resource um there's the website and then they they post the the different the different videos on twitter and as well i i probably spend far too much time on instagram on twitter just looking through for drills you know from from literally anywhere I'll, i'll just sort of search for a specific topic and then i'll find one account and find the next account and the next account um and I think an- another good one that I've that I find is there's Sarge Mahmood, the former England bowler. Um, he has an Instagram account, um, where he posts different different videos of um, you know, different drills, and some of them are quite different. Um, so it's but it's it, again, it's for me, it's good just seeing how someone else delivers something and, and what like so what sort of drills they do. Great. Um, and just on those, I'll share them at the end of the conversation for anybody who wants to to give them a follow and take some notes. Um, in terms of women's cricket in CSNI, where was it before you started? Where is it currently, and where do you think it can it can get to in the future? Um, do you know, I I think we we were in a, a decent place before I started. Um, I think it's sort of women's cricket within the NCU has just sort of grown um, since then. And, you know, as with CS and I, we've grown since, you know, since I started. So we started in a good place um, and then we sort of grown the, the, the last couple of years, which has been brilliant. And similarly with the the game evolving across across the NCU, um, you know, we've currently got two teams, um, two teams entered. And I think, I think for me, what a, brilliant goal would be is at the minute we don't have the resources sort of playing or coaching or facilitating to have both teams play on the same day and you see something for me whether it would be this year or next year if we could get two teams to play on the same day that would be fantastic um, and and then going down the line and um, potentially go to you know a third team which would be the first would be the first team in in the NC to do that um, and sort of going forward with obviously last year we reached the All-Ireland T20 final um and you know we were we we were set very much second place in, in that final but i i think what we'd like to do at, at csni is build an environment which gets a bit closer to the super series sort of level um you know in in terms of what we can offer obviously we, we, we'll never get quite there but if we can just aspire to be to be better and um, you know then that's i think how we could get closer to the to the teams from leinster which ultimately is is the goal um because you know it would be great to see a team and like literally any team from from the ncu win that all ireland competition by raising the game across the ncu and then i i think as well just not within civil service i think within the ncu you know there's now a dedicated women and girls development officer um and there's a lot of work being done in in the pathways to raise you know the overall game never mind just the the individual clubs so i think all the all the right things are, are going in the right way. And I just, I hope civil service can stay on, you know, stay on track with, with how things are, are, are progressing and continue to progress too. I suppose the one key point that stood out for me there, Gareth, uh, it wasn't about performances that you mentioned there. It wasn't about winning or losing. It was about two teams playing on the same day. And that does showcase a lot about you as a person. Um, that you're all about the club, you're all about playing. You've touched on fun and engagement, and I think that's really great attributes to have in a coach. And so thanks for sharing that piece. Um, you've mentioned you're a project manager. Um, 
I do an awful lot of projects myself. I don't have an awful lot of project manage, management experience, but I think in terms of coaching and planning and your full-time role, there must be an awful lot of cross-collaboration there. And How does it support you in your coaching? Yeah, I, I think with coaching and something that I never realised is like there is an awful lot of like admin that, you know, that people probably are, are never aware of, you know, whether that's as simple as, you know, collecting up money for sports halls during the winter or, you know, planning sessions, booking pitches, um, organizing matches and whatever else. And it it almost does become a bit of a part time job sometimes just the admin itself. And um, so I think it's I think, you know, my job helps a lot because I have to be quite organized in my job and I have to be able to plan my time and, you know, plan how how things are going. So I, I think in terms of that organizational side, it, it definitely is a massive benefit to to the cricket because if if you're not organized it can become a big mess you know very 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 quickly and I think that's sort of as a coach for me that's one of the key things if I can keep on top of all of that admin and um, it almost makes the, the actual coaching a bit easier because I don't need to worry about oh have I done this have I done that if I can you know plan my time and make sure that I've done things um ahead of time then yeah I don't need to worry about that that's great to hear and in terms of the input that you give to your planning for your sessions how much time does that take up <laughs> probably way more time than it should um yeah I, I i as i said i try and be i try and be honestly over organized as opposed to under organized um to so just make sure that i that i know exactly what i'm going to deliver in the sessions make sure that i have all of the kit that i need um ready make sure that i've you know what i I really don't like being late anywhere. You know, simple things is make sure I'm, I'm often far too early, but make sure I'm very, very early places so that I, I can, you know, set everything up the, how I want it, and then I can feel, I can feel comfortable. And um, so it's, yeah, it's a, there's a lot of planning that goes into it, but I, you know, I, I don't mind. I'd rather do it, I'd rather do it right by, by me than opposed to, opposed to rush it. So I, because I, because I enjoy the coaching, I don't mind the, the commitment that comes with it. Great to hear, great to hear. If you're not an hour earlier, like somebody saying coaching, I know I do. Um, see, you've touched on what you do as a career, you've touched on your coaching. So where do you find the balance? So you've got, I'm sure you have a busy lifestyle, you're a young man, you're coaching, busy career, obviously doing really well in your career. So where do you find that balance and what helps you to keep that balance on a week by week basis? Yeah, it, you know, it, it is tough. Um. It can be tough, but I think I'm very fortunate with work that I very much work nine to five. I don't, you know, I do, I don't work evenings. I don't work weekends. So I'm able to down tools at five o'clock and then, you know, do what I need to do in the evenings. Um, and I think, I think sort of what helps the coaching as well is I still play as much as I can, you know, and I'm, I'm not the best player, but I really enjoy playing and I don't, I don't really take it too seriously. So I think it's nice on those, on those days, you know, whether it be a midweek, you know, there's a midweek league in the NCU, which is probably quite relaxed um, on, you know, on, on, on a weeknight and you can just go and try and hit the ball as hard as you try, or as hard as you can, try and bowl as fast as you can. Um, and I, I think it's just nice to see that side of cricket and, you know, play with people that I've known since I was 10 or 11 um, and just have fun um, because it's, it, it, it can be hard if I'm going straight from work to coaching you know, and then, and then getting in late. So I think it's just trying to do those little bits of fun um, either side of it to, to sort of keep me, you know, well-rested and not burnt out. Great. And then, you know, the, you're, you're very much on the start of your coaching journey, but it sounds, although you've got the massive recognition at a very early stage, which is warranted, um, what has been your biggest learning moment in that time as a coach? I, I'm not sure whether there's a, there, there's a specific moment. I think just over the, the course of sort of the last two years, like I have made mistakes and I know I've made mistakes. And I, I think for me, that's sort of key. You know, I've done things. And then if I look back now, I'm like, Garth, why on earth did you do that? Um, I, I think it's just making sure that I reflect and learn on what I've done before and, you know, couple that with trying to, to do things you know trying to do the the core coach was great and um, trying to do courses that, that that come up to try and to try and progress my knowledge um, and no doubt going forward that I'll continue to make mistakes but I think I just need to make sure that I keep evolving 
you know, and then making sure that I don't do the same thing over and over um, to, to, to try and keep progressing. And there's no better people to keep you on your toes than players. Mm. Um, in terms of the future, what does the future hold for you in terms of your coaching? Have you any individual aspirations or, you know, is it very much you love volunteering as a coach? Um, I honestly, I, I don't know. I, like, if you were asking me to what I want to do in five years, I don't know whether that's cricket or or my my job. But I, I think I want to progress in my cricket. You know, I I do want to coach in these high performance environments. Um, I I do want to try and coach at a higher level. Um, you know, I I am quite ambitious with it. Just like I was, I think it comes from my you know my running. I was quite ambitious as an athlete, so I am quite ambitious as as a coach naturally. Um, but yeah, I honestly what that looks like, I don't know. Um I'll I'll take whatever opportunities come. Um and if you know if you'd have asked me two years ago if I if you thought I would have been where I am now, I probably would have said that you were mad. So um I guess I'll I'll see. I'll keep trying to learn as much as possible and take as many opportunities as I can. You come across as, a, as an extremely driven person, Gareth. Where does that come from? Um, again, to, to, to talk about it, I, I think it comes back to athletics. You know, I, for some reason, I was very driven and, um, like I, I just turned up consistently and, and, I, and, it, and it seemed to pay off. Um, and I, I think that I still, I still take some, some things from, from my sprinting days in Denoy. Um, and it was, you know, it, it was very goal driven and I did it for a long time. You know, it was like, if you wanted to get, you know, there's no hiding place. Like if, if you didn't run well, it's the, the, the time showed up against your name. It wasn't like, Oh, that was, that was Stephen's fault. He held me back. It was just, it was just on me. So I knew that if, if I had to get better, I needed to, I needed to put the work in. So I, I think that that's, that's sort of where it comes from. And that's where it sort of bleeds into my cricket. Um, which is, I think it's, it, I think it's largely a, a good thing. Brilliant, and I'm delighted you've touched on that. So you've taken what you've learned in athletics and brought it into cricket. Do you think us as cricket coaches can learn more from other sports and also give to other sports? Oh yeah, I, I de- definitely. I I think there's a lot of like cross crossover between sports. You know, even you know something that that I've been doing a lot of. It's the players that they seem to like just silly little little games like like you know hopping or jumping like plyometric exercises which I, I think you know I haven't seen much of in cricket before whereas if you think about it if you improve your balance if you improve a bit of speed if you improve a bit of explosive explosive strength you know it's it's only going to help so I, I think if you look at it there's there's a lot of sports that, that that can learn it you know can learn from other sports even with with cricket and with um with coaching the women and girls quite a lot of them come from hockey and you know some of their hand-eye coordination is frightening. Like they they're happy to hit a ball off middle stump over the leg side, and it's like I would never even think of doing that. I'd miss the ball completely. Um, but yeah, all racket sports, you know, I think have a lot to learn from each other. Um, whether that you know we have some tennis players, squash players, hockey players. Um, you know, if you've got that hand-eye coordination, you, you can really go across a lot of sports and just same with like general athleticism you know if if you're an, an athlete you can do sort of any sport you want really where you know you just throw yourself in and with a bit of coaching you, you'll most likely be do quite well that's great to hear the future sounds extremely bright for you Garrett and um, thank you very much for joining us on coach discussions and sharing your journey cheers Stephen I hope you enjoyed today's coach discussion. If you would like to share your coaching journey, log on to cricketprograms.com forward slash coach connects and sign up today. Here are the social media recommendations discussed in today's coach discussion. Why not check them out and add to your coaching toolbox?